Python tutorial, Philips Parent Test. First order train stationary time series consists of random processes that have constant mean which don't exhibit trend pattern. This topic is part of Purse Training Analysis with Python Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Philips parent test consists of evaluating whether time series was first order train stationary with null hypothesis that it had a unit root and was not stationary. For full reference, I recommend that you read Philips and Perron Testing for a Unit Root in Time Series Regression, published by Biometrica in 1988. As a formula, we have that current period data difference is equal to a constant plus a beta coefficient multiplied by a trend variable. This trend variable is a sequence from 1 all the way to the number of observations, plus a gamma coefficient multiplied by previous periods data, plus this regression forecasting errors or residuals. And then we have three options. Option A, with constant equals to 0 and beta equals to 0, therefore Philips parent test without a constant and without a trend variable. Option B, constant different to 0 and beta equals to 0, therefore Philips parent test with a constant but without a trend variable. And option C, constant different to zero and beta different to zero. Therefore, Philips parent test with a constant and with a trend variable. And what we're testing is a gamma coefficient heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation consistent t-statistic approximated p-value. If gamma coefficient heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation consistent t-statistic approximated p-value was less than alpha level of statistical significance, then time series was first order train stationary with 1 minus alpha level of statistical confidence. On the other hand, if gamma coefficient heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation consistent t-statistic approximated p-value was greater than alpha level of statistical significance, then higher differentiation order needed for first order train stationary time series with 1 minus alpha level of statistical confidence. Great, so let's go into Python PyCharm ID so that we can study Philips parent test with greater detail. Perfect. So here we are within Python PyCharm ID. In this tutorial, we'll be working within Python tutorial Philips parent test code file. So the first step within the tutorial is to do packages importing. So we're going to import numpy SMP, pandas SPD, matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then arch.unitroot as at. That is to do data reading. In this case, we're going to create a data object, which is going to be equal to pd or pandas.read underscore csv, and within it, the path to the data file, found within data directory and its name, which is Philips parent test data as a plain text file without csv or comma separated values. Index column as date, and we parse those dates as true. So let's go ahead and open that data file. As we can see, we have a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values. We have two columns of data. First of these dates, dates with a date frequency from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2016, therefore 10 years of data. And then we have EWG adjusted. EWG corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the MSCI Germany index, and adjusted because this includes adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. So back into the code file, the following step is we are going to delimit training and testing ranges. Training range, commonly used for PERS identification and PERS spread co-integration evaluation, and testing range, commonly used for PERS trading strategies evaluation. So here, first we create a training range, which is going to be named tData, and is equal to data from the beginning of the time series all the way into the end of 2014, therefore the first eight years of data. We rename its columns with dot columns equals to and we have German prices within the training range. And then we have F data. F data corresponds to the testing range data, which is equal to data from the beginning of 2015 all the way to the end of 2016, which is the end of the time series. Therefore, we have the last two years of data. And we're going to rename its columns with F data dot columns as German prices within the testing range. Notice that this training and testing ranges delimiting was only included for educational purposes, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. In this tutorial, we'll only be working within the training range. So then, 
we're going to visualize the corresponding prices within the chart. In this case, we're going to visualize prices from the train range. So we create this new object, which is going to be named German prices within the train range, which is going to be equal to the data. And then we have fig1, figure1, comma ax or axis, equals to plt, that's plot.subplots. And within the axis, we're going to plot German prices within the train range with the corresponding label. And the legend located at the lower right, title of this chart, which is going to be German prices within the train range, prices chart, and we show the chart. And the last step is those prices, Philip's parent test. So notice here that we create this object, which is going to be German prices within the train range, PP for Philip's parent, which is equal to AT, that's art feature, dot Philip's parent, capital P, both of this. And we're going to perform this test for German prices within the train range. And here trend we have equals to CT. So this is going to be a test, which is going to include constant and also the trend variable. And then we have test type equals to tall. So notice here, that the parameters included within this function were only included as examples for educational purposes, and therefore they are not fixed and they can be modified according to your needs. And then we're going to print the results. First a blank space, then the title, which is going to be Prices Phillips Parent Test, another blank space, and then we're going to print Phillips Parent PP Test Statistic and the associated p-value. Again, this Phillips Parent Test done for German prices within the training range. And for the test statistic and p-value, we're going to print both of this with NumPy rounded for six decimal places. And for the statistic, we have German prices within the train range, PP, or the Phillips parent, and we print the test statistic with dot stat. And for the p-value, we do so for German prices within the train range, PP or Phillips parent, dot p-value. So let's go ahead and run this code file. When we're doing it for the first time, what we do is at any part of the code, we click the right button on the mouse and scroll down into the code file name to run it. But as I've done it before recording this video tutorial, and the name's already stored here, Python tutorial, Phil's parent test. So I just go ahead, select it and click run. Perfect. So first we have a chart here, which is German prices within the training range, corresponding chart. On the vertical axis, we have the adjusted close prices. On the horizontal one, we have dates from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2014. Therefore, the first eight years of data or the corresponding training range. So we close the chart and right here within the running console, we see the results. So we have those German prices within the training range, Philips parent test. And first of all, we have Philips parent PP test statistic, the corresponding result, and then Philips parent PP test P value and the corresponding result. This is the P value for the test as described within the corresponding slides. Excellent. So now that we finished studying Philips parent test, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.